Okay, guys. So uh, probably by now you've already watched Dr. Mark Jouet's videos. Um, so they are there. If I'm not mistaken, they're uh, week 11. So on week 11, you can see two PDF files, two videos. The, the first PDF file shows you how to uh, SSH, secure shell, secure uh, connect through a command line interface to our uh, database management server. Um, well, actually, Dr. Mark Jouet, he explains that first you have to connect to our server, the operating system server, the Linux server, and then once you are in, in that box, you, which hosts the DBMS, you can then get access to the DBM and I'm sorry to the DBMS command line interface. Okay. So uh, in that PDF, in the two first PDFs, the two PDFs actually, you can see how to get access um, using the command line interface okay first the first PDF shows you how to use the uh, the terminal software which is uh, it's a, a, a native software it comes in the Mac OS operating system if you're using Windows the second PDF shows you that you have to use putty which is also a command line interface to SSH, uh, in command line software to interface with our, our server. Um, after that, you have two videos. The first one shows you how to use Putty. The second one shows you how to use Putty SFTP file transfer software, PSFTP. Okay, and the, the reason why we only have those, we have those two videos for Windows users and no videos for Mac OS users is because you don't really need a, an extra software, a third party software to connect SSH or uh, SFTP from a Mac OS operating system to our MySQL uh, server or DBMS, okay? But although you can either SSH, get a command line access to our server or either file transfer using the terminal software, file transfer using the command line interface, your job can be facilitated by using a graphical interface to transfer files, right? So in this, in the, the, which one is it? The last video out of the two, the second video so shows Windows users how to connect to, uh, how to transfer files using PSFTP, okay? And here, what I want to do is, I want to show how to use a, a graphical interface software to transfer files specifically for macOS users. I'm going to do another video uh, where I'm going to show you how to use a graphical interface uh, file transferring software for Windows users. But the, the goal here in this video is to show you how to use uh, a software called Forklift. You can actually see the icon here for, for the Forklift software. Well, the Forklift software, as I mentioned, is a, a software to allow you to transfer files from your macOS operating system to our Linux server that hosts our DBMS, okay? Uh, and the reason I decided to do this video is because 
the first PDF actually shows you how to um, use a graphical interface software to transfer files from a Mac Mac OS operating system to our server. However, that software is not a free software anymore. So that's why I'm making this video here because now I want to show you how to use Forklift, which is a free software. Okay, and you're going to see that it's actually very easy to use. So once you install Forklift, and well, there are actually many, many different ways to to do it, but whatever the way you use to install it, you're going to install Forklift, okay? And you're going to open it. And when you open it, it's going to show you two separate columns here, okay? The first one is where you're going to copy files to. Well, either way, it, it doesn't matter. So... The, but at least that's how I, I use it. I use the first column here as my, let's say, my remote uh, file storage system. And this one is, is where I can see my local files. Okay, so the idea here is, what I want to do here is, let's say that, and we're actually going to do this example, Let's say that I want to use the Premiere SQL script file to create that structure in my DBMS, or uh, I'm sorry, in my database. Okay, well, usually you could use, or at least before this, you would use MySQL Workbench, which is very simple and it facilitates your job. But we must be capable of doing it uh, by a more direct way, where I can directly interact with my uh, database. Okay, so as you've seen in a previous video, one of Dr. Joette's video, you would use the terminal here to get remote access to the um, database, your database, okay? So it's actually very simple. So using the, uh, and I'm not talking about file transferring so far, okay? So just to get remote access to your database, you we would first need to SSH, get a remote secure shell, get a remote secure access to your database. But before you get access to the database, you have to get access to, to the server that hosts the DBMS. So the syntax here, and once again, uh, this is only for macOS users, okay? It's, the, if you're a Windows user, oh, you can also do the same if you're a Linux user. But if you're a Windows user, then you need to install PuTTY. Okay, so okay. Uh, the syntax is SSH your FSU ID. Okay, in my case, they are known as the Oliveira at, and this is the server. Okay, this is the remote server. MySQL dash Joat dot CCI dot FSU dot EDU. Okay, it's going to ask you for your password and that is your FSU password okay or blackboard password as you will you type in the password and there you are you have access to to our server okay but once again here I'm not accessing accessing my database Okay, it's just the operating system server, the application server. Okay, well, I already have here the DB folder which uh, is required 
that you, you, you create, as you've seen in Dr. Joette's video, okay? So once you get access, you have to create this folder here called DB, database, okay? And the idea is, I am going to access this, um, I'm sorry, this folder here, and my Premiere SQL script file is already there but that's because I've, I've done it before, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this file here, there. And now my DB folder is empty because I want to show you our ultimate goal, which is transfer the Premiere SQL script file that we have in our machine and then transfer it to the server here. And once I have the script file, in the MySQL server, I can run this script uh, into the, or push this script content statements into my database, okay? So, okay, now going back here to the forklift. So ultimately what I want to see here is, I want to see this structure here, my the, the my files and folders structure that I have in the server, I want to see that over here, and here I'm I'm gonna see my uh, local files. Okay, so there what I need here is to tell Forklift. Okay, Forklift, this is uh, the address to my uh, server. Okay, and these are my uh, my uh, information that I that you're gonna need to establish the connection, okay? My login and password. So all you have to do is click here on Go, connect. The protocol, this is the one, okay? SFTP, forklift actually support others, but this is the one you have to use. The server is, just the same way you defined when you were uh, configuring MySQL Workbench. It's mysql-jawaiat.ccifsu.edu. Uh, That's your username, and this one, this password here, is your FSU password. It's not your FSU ID, it's your FSU, ID, FSU password, which is the Nunes the Oliveira connect. Oh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. So that that is your FSU ID here and your FSU password here, not your FSU ID. So your FSU password and your FSU ID. I, I, I made a mistake here. So I was actually typing uh, my FSU ID. So it's your FSU password. Just make sure. Of course, I can't tell you that. And connect. There. So the same structure that you see here, if I go back to my root folder, oh, I'm sorry. If I go back to my root folder, which is slash home slash my username, and I list files here, only thing that I have is the DB folder. There it is. So now I know and I can you can see it up here. I'm connected to MySQL, Joet, CCI, FSU, EDU. Uh, in the home folders, I have my personal folder, the Nunes de Oliveira, that's your FSU ID. Okay? And the only thing that I have there is this folder here. Okay? So what I want to do is transfer any file. In this case, I'm going to use the Premiere SQL script file which is here in my local um, folders here, my local structure, 
I'm going to go to users, my user there, documents, FSU, undergrad, database, and here. I actually I have to move it up here to scripts, but that's not important. So basically, I just, whoa. I just drag and drop over there into the DB folder. There it is. So if I go here, and once again, this is a remote access. Whatever I type in here or whatever I see here, it's not local. It's in our server, OK? So once again, I have the DB folder. I'm going to open that DB folder and list. Look, now I have my script file there. OK? If you want to check the content, well, there are many ways to do it. OK? You can uh, just see the content using the more command. OK? And you hit the space bar to continue because it's going to freeze once it fulfills the screen there so it's the same premiere sql script file okay now once i transferred my file you can actually do uh, whatever you need to do so now I want to show how to do it using the command line interface, which, well, actually Dr. Joet showed in his video, but I want to show again here. Okay, so as Dr. Joet showed you guys in one of the previous videos, once you're connected here, this is just the server, okay, but not the DBMS. To connect to the DBMS, what you're going to do is you're going to use the MySQL, MySQL command dash u as in user, your username or FSU ID, okay, dash p because you want to inform the password, you want the MySQL command to ask you for your password, okay, because you do have a password. And then your database name. Okay. So here is your FS, your password is your FSU ID. In this case, the Nunes, oops, I think I did something wrong. The Nunes de Oliveira. There. Okay. So I'm connected to my database. So as you already know, let's use, for example, the show tables command and there I have the Premier SQL structure there but uh, okay pay at attention to this I copied the Premier SQL script file to the server but I didn't push the content of this file into my database okay meaning this that is not why I have the structure here. I already have the premiere structure here because I created it before. Okay, so to show you what I want to show, I'm going to delete the content. Drop table, sales rep, part, orders, order line, customer. Uh, so draw, let me see which one failed, show tables, okay, drop table part, okay, drop table orders, okay, show table, show tables, it's empty, okay, so this is a possible, a, a possible situation, your database is empty, okay, I'm going to disconnect here, quit. I'm disconnecting from the MySQL 
server, not from the operating system or the application server, okay? I'm still connected to the application server, okay? So what I want to do is I want to, now that I am in the host machine, the remote host machine that is hosting my database or DBMS, I want to tell the DBMS, DBMS, I want you to push this script content or these statements into my database. Okay, well, this is what you have to do. I already have the statement here. It's the same idea, the same command you use when you're connecting to the database. Look, MySQL command dash u your FSUID dash p to request a password space your FSUID. But now I use uh, the left arrow space the script file. Okay, meaning what it's doing is I'm connecting to my database and I am going to run this script, this SQL script. That's all I'm doing there. I run it and I type my database password, which is your FSU ID. E. Nunes de Oliveira. Probably, I, I hope you noticed that it, it took maybe one or two seconds between uh, the moment I hit enter, I entered my password, and when I got the shell available here again. The reason is the DBMS was interpreting the script file and executing those statements. So how can I verify if now the Premier structure is actually there? Well, you connect once again. You connect back to your database. And if you remember, if I scroll back here, show tables empty. I had no tables anymore. Now that I uh, pushed the Premier SQL script into my database, I am now going to show tables, and there are my tables, okay? And also the values. For example, select everything from customer. There, okay? We can actually do this. So this is how you transfer files from your local machine to our server, well, which you could use to transfer script files. And then once you have the script file in, your, uh, in our server, you can push that file into your database, okay? And the reason that you, you should use it is because, well, as you've seen in Dr. Joette's video, once you get remote access to your database, basically everything you're going to do here is using commands and statements that you have to create them uh, by your own. So imagine, let me disconnect here and expand this window here. Okay. Imagine that you're going to create a set of tables with values just like the content that you have in your Premier SQL script file. Okay, so you have many, many statements there. Imagine that each line here would require you to, once you're connected to your database, oh, okay, And you would uh, type all those statements and each of those statements here. It would, uh, it would uh, uh, 
take you a very long time. But of course, um, the, to create the script file, many times, well, you can actually use Workbench to create the script file, but most of the times you want to create this, uh, these script files by your own. Okay, do a manual job because then you, you know what you're doing. But the problem is, if you start typing each and all of these statements here, okay, let's say that at a specific moment, you realize, uh oh, I did something wrong, okay? And let's say that you've already typed in 100 statements. Oh, there is a structure error. I have to start it all over again. You would have go. You have. You would have to go back to the first statement, do it all over again. If you are creating a script file in your local machine, and then you realize that is that there is something wrong, you just go back to that file, to that text file, fix what you want, copy the file from your local machine to the remote server again, and then you import it this way. Over, sorry, this way here, okay? It's a lot easier, okay? Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you guys, and in the next video, I'm going to show you how, show uh, Windows users how to use a Windows graphical interface to transfer files. Thank you, guys.